Hello, economic students. So in the last group of videos, we were looking at market failures. And remember, we had to assume that the market was free from government intervention and that it was a competitive market. And if we had a world like that, the market would fail in those instances that we, uh, that we discovered. Of course, we all live in the real world. And in the real world, we do have a government that intervenes in the market. So in this dot point, what we're really trying to understand is these tools that the government uses to intervene in the market and to correct the market failure. So of course, the government does study some economics, they understand some economics, and they do intervene to achieve efficiencies, to correct the market failure. At least that's the intention of the government. We're going to see that their intentions are not always matched up with the outcomes, but their intention is to improve efficiency. Here's the tools that they use. These are the tools that they open in their toolbox and they have to provide, to tax, to subsidize some regulations and advertising. In this video, we're gonna look at subsidies and the direct provision of goods or services. And the reason is that they work very much the same. Now, these are a little bit confusing, these interventions, because it's not so much the relative price that we're gonna focus on that allocates resources, but it's actually the shift of the supply curve. So just remember that there's a little bit of confusion around when the supply changes, how that affects resource allocation. Okay, so we're going to look at these interventions uh, where we can on a demand and supply curve. So firstly, direct provision. This is as the name suggests. It's the government directly providing or provision, same thing. It's the government effectively adding to the market supply by supplying goods and services themselves. So this would increase the supply curve. You can see here there's a shift to the right. S1 is the market supply without any government intervention. So the free market without any uh, free and competitive market. And S1 is when the, the government intervenes in the market. So we have the market supply plus the government's supply of whatever particular good or service we're looking at. Now, this is going to increase the quantity traded here from uh, Q to Q1. So we're going to assume that that means that there's more resources being allocated to this particular market, or at least there's more, um, there is more of these particular goods or services being produced, and that is the important part. So which failures would they be using to, which, which failures would they try and correct using this tool of directly providing? And if you think about it, they're trying to allocate more resources to produce more of this particular good. So we're going to be thinking about in a later video, this, they're going to use this to do uh, to correct public goods and to correct positive externalities. All right, so subsidies. Subsidy is a, or a subsidy is a payment to suppliers. It has other forms, but usually it's just a dollar payment, an amount of money that is paid to suppliers per unit of production. So you produce one of uh, this particular good or service, the government will pay you $20, let's say. So it's trying to encourage the production by the market. Unlike provision, which is uh, creating their own supply, they're actually trying to increase market supply. So subsidies work to reduce the costs of production. Uh, remember that supply factor. So all other things being equal, they're able, producers are able to supply more at each and every price. So this will shift the supply curve to the right as well, decrease the price for consumers, and also we'll have more resources allocated. We're going to assume more resources allocated to this particular market. So let's have a look. So it's the same thing we looked at before. The results are the same. It's just for different reasons. So S is our market supply. S and D are our market without any intervention. And in this market, we're trying to shift the supply curve to the right. So we've got the market supply plus the subsidy results in a shift to the right. Okay. And again, that means that there's more production and there's more resources being allocated to this particular market. Again, why would they want to use this? I think they're going to use this for the same reasons. They're correcting an under allocation or an under production. So public goods, negative externalities. And a little bit extra here, they could actually use subsidies to encourage the production of a substitute of a negative externality. We'll come back to that later in a later video. Little quick extension here, just to understand how subsidies work. This is a quantity supplied schedule. 
and you can see that when a subsidy is given to producers for every unit of good or service that they provide or good or services that they provide this will mean they'll produce more at each price you can do this uh, you can calculate the cost per unit with no subsidy well it's going to be uh, it's going to be ten dollars isn't it and if the government pays a subsidy of 20 percent you can calculate uh, what the cost per unit might be, but it's gonna decrease the cost per unit, therefore they'll supply more at each price. So little extension, if that helps, use it, otherwise you can ignore this particular slide. All right, so that's direct provision and subsidies. Remember they're designed to shift the supply curve outward and produce more of a particular good or service. They're usually used for public goods or positive externalities. Okay, correct the under allocation. Bye for now.